All right. Next up, we have with us Justin Wu, Senior Cortex Developer Advocate at Seagate, who will be introducing to us Cortex, its inherent architecture, and how they're democratizing access to mass capacity object storage. Over to you, Justin. Great. Hi, everybody. My name is Justin Wu, and I think you can see my screen, which should say Introduction to Cortex. Cortex. If you can't, feel free to put in the chat window that you can't see it. Uh, my name is Justin Wu. I'm a developer advocate for the Cortex team uh, at Seagate, and I'm going to actually introduce you to Cortex. I'm going to talk about exactly what is Cortex, why Cortex is important to us at Seagate, and more importantly, how you can contribute to Cortex since it's 100% open source. And again, feel free to uh, put questions in the chat window if you have any questions there. And at the end of the presentation, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. So the first thing would be, what is Cortex, right? And to answer the question, Cortex is an intelligent object storage software optimized for mass capacity and data intensive workloads. But more importantly, Cortex is 100% on GitHub and 100% open source. Cortex is also uh, created by Seagate. And you might be asking, what has Seagate got to do with object storage? We're traditionally uh, hard drive experts. And I think a lot of people in our company would say that you don't really know a hard drive as much until you really open up and see the inner workings of it. So let me talk a little bit about why object storage and software is important to us at Seagate and why we actually want you to contribute to our cause. So to do that, I have to talk about this global data implosion. And the IDC thinks that by the end of this uh, 2025, we're going to have about 158 zettabytes of data being produced. Now, more importantly, we only think that 17 zettabytes, or a small percentage of that, will actually be stored. So our customers, every day, have to make decisions based on their data not being stored. Uh, we think there's a tremendous amount of data being created, but we just do not have the current capacity to store it, which is why it's important for us to increase the storage capacity for our customers so they don't have to make important decisions on what data to store. And as we all know in AI and machine learning, the more data you store, the better decisions you can make with your AI and machine learning models. Just imagine how many lives could potentially be saved if we have better models and more data stored. One of our key examples of Cortex that our customers are using is actually AI for agriculture. So what they did was they took photos of different crops in Africa and stored it in Cortex. And because of Cortex, they're able to store as much data as they want there and make better decisions with their AI and machine learning. So by doing so, they're able to save lives. So we want to actually increase the amount of storage we can. So how does the question you have to ask yourself is how does um, Cortex or object storage increase the amount of capacity uh, being, of data being stored? Well, traditionally, when we store data, a lot of money is spent on not just the drives alone, but installation hardware support, the operating system support, the networking, and the servers. So actually, less than 25% of the actual money is spent on storage itself. The, hard, the physical hard drive itself, which is surprising, right? Here at Cortex, if we can reduce the amount of money spent on the overhead of the software by making that 100% open source, then effectively, people can buy more hard drives and store more data. So that's our goal and mission in creating Cortex, which is 100% open source. So you might be asking yourself, how long has Seagate been working on object storage? And you'd be surprised to know that Seagate has actually been in object storage since 1999. In fact, David Anderson, one of our researchers, proposed some of the first commands for object storage. So we've been in the ob object storage space for a very, very long time. In 2013, we actually produced a kinetic drive with the object storage interface itself. And in 2015, we actually published that standard and the EU selected us, Seagate, to lead SAGE, which is a research consortium, to actually further and produce our research and put it in, into the, the open for people to share. 
among Europe, enable people, other researchers to build off what we have created. So, so Seagate ourselves have actually been in the object storage space for a long time. Now, what's the reason for maybe the untapped data's percentage increase? So basically, why is it that in, even though we're increasing the amount of hard drives, uh, object storage and other platforms, there's a lot of untapped potential there. So for Seagate, we're already delivering a bunch of hard drives, but there's a lot of actually, a lot of hyperscalers that are taking these hard drives and research that they've done, you know, Amazon, Google, and other big companies, and create an object storage in the cloud. But they may not share a lot of their findings and research. It's, and a lot of their uh, platforms are not 100% open source. Here at Seagate, our Cortex software is actually 100% open source. So what we've done is we've taken the research that we've done on Cortex and actually open sourced it and inviting everybody to go ahead and contribute to our Cortex software. In fact, at Seagate, we've only got one goal, which is to help our customers store more data. And like I talked about, the way we want to do that is actually to free up more customer budget so they can actually spend more money and actually increase their hard drive capacity. We also want to make software commodity by open sourcing Cortex. And the way to have a successful open source project, as many of you guys know, is to really build a vibrant and engaged community. So Seagate's goal here would be to help the world, uh, help customers save more data and basically take big data problems and solve it with more accuracy by storing more data. So now that I've talked about Cortex and why it's important to us, I want to talk about our community and how we've actually uh, built our community uh, to make it more welcoming to people. Actually, our community values, which are very important to us, uh, are on our GitHub page. and includes being inclusive, uh, being open, inspiring people with big, massive challenges. And lastly, it's evolving. So we want to encourage you guys to actually join our community and help us contribute, help us steer where we're headed to. You know, we're in the very beginnings of building this community. So you can be a very key founding member of our community and help us steer the direction of where you think Cortex should go. And again, we're very inclusive and very open. So we're very welcoming to anybody in any contribution which, which you are uh, inclined to make. Here are some of our project scope and design goals. So a lot of it is we wanted to work with any processor and in any hard drive and any hardware. We want it to be massively scalable. So almost up to with unlimited object sizes. Responsiveness is very important to us. So we want it to be extremely performant and resilient. And then lastly, we want it to be transparent. So we're going to provide insights, and I'll show you later in our API and SDK. We provide APIs for you to get data on your storage, show how quickly it's storing, and provide telemetry so you understand the performance of your data being stored. So let's say you want to get started with Cortex. What's the easiest way to do that? We've got a GitHub repository, githubcom slash Cortex, where you can actually go in and look at our different sub-modules and contribute immediately to Cortex. Uh, you can file issues, you can create discussions, and, and we absolutely want to encourage you to make pull requests to our repo. In fact, you can join our community on Slack. We've got a ton of members and, we're, and a bunch of different channels tied to different features and, and places in, in our Cortex repository. And we're always on there answering questions and getting the community engaged. So please, this is a very great area where you can join our Slack and our GitHub page and contribute there. If you want to try Cortex, we made it very super simple for you to try it. Right now, you can run it on VMware or VirtualBox, workstation on VMware. We've also got an EC2 instance. Uh, that you can actually deploy very quickly. And we're working with third-party software like CloudShare to easily deploy Cortex uh, virtually. And we're actually coming soon. We're going to have Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure support, and, and other third-party software where you can easily deploy Cortex on multiple instances where, that suit, to where you want to deploy it to easily test and build it. One of the really cool things about Cortex is our management interface. So we've got a very nice GUI here where you can actually get the performance of Cortex. Uh, you can see things like health alerts, the capacity that's being stored. You can track read and write data. 
And you can also manage accounts. So you can create new S3 account, accounts and new administrative users all through our really nice GUI. And like everything else, this is 100% open source. So you can take this, fork it, create your own branch, and create your own GUI that would better suit your need. We've also got a bunch of API calls that we support. In fact, we are S3 supported. We have actually a bunch of S3 APIs here. So anything that you want to do with S3, uh, the S3 APIs, you can do with Cortex. We've also got a bunch of management APIs where you can create accounts, delete accounts, create uh, S3 users or delete users. And we've also got a bunch of Cortex CSM APIs too, where you can get alerts, you know, system health, um, and other statistics of the system itself. And again, all of these are uh, readily published APIs. Lastly, we've got a lot of integrations. So because we're S3 compatible, any third-party platform that is an S3 interface, you can easily integrate with Cortex. So some of my favorite ones, of course, you guys are probably familiar with, is our TensorFlow integration, where we took the S3 interface and we simply took TensorFlow and stored and retrieved data uh, to help build the mo TensorFlow model. We've also got things like IPFS, uh, you know, like to Filecoin, and and PyTorch, uh, you know, even Slack. Right? Uh, you know, if you want to store and retrieve data on Slack, you can do that. So I've got a ton, and Dicom, you know, for X-rays. So again, if you have any third-party platform that is an easy to use or, or is S3 compatible, you can easily integrate with Cortex since you're S3 compatible too. And lastly, all these integrations are open source. So you can go to our page and actually contribute and download and run all these integrations. And we want to encourage you, that everybody, to actually add to our integration page. We've also got a community roadmap. So we have uh, quarterly hackathons, uh, one coming up in Singapore, where I'm going to post a link later on. So we encourage you guys to help us join and build integrations and, and go ahead and, and add to Cortex itself. We've also got newsletters that we publish every month. And also webinars, so monthly meet and, meet and architect, so we can talk about the inner workings of Cortex, how we're actually building it, you know, areas that we need improvement, and, and how things are working, and lessons that we've learned ourselves in Cortex. Again, I talked about how to contribute to Cortex, but we have a ton of different sub-modules here, and each sub-module each sub is broken down into its own separate repository. Also, if you want to contribute to Cortex, uh, here, you know, not only in the page, we've got branches that you and, and other pull requests that you can put here too. Uh, I've also got a list of ways you can contribute. So, for example, even things like creating a pull request or filing issues or just simple things like improving the documentation, we welcome. We, in fact, you know, we love it when you guys test out Cortex and improve and think about performance or, or find issues with your own hardware and, and areas that we can actually increase uh, improvement on. So last but not least, come join us to help make Cortex better. I think everyone knows that storage has increased uh, hardware-wise, but the next evolution is probably in software. And in fact, we want you to join the community so you can influence and help guide us. Right? We're a very uh, young community, and, and we're looking for people to actually influence us and guide us to where we can steer Cortex. And lastly, help us build and shape the future of Cortex. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is my email. I welcome anybody emailing to email me and ask me how they can actually contribute and, and join our community. Uh, lastly, I've also got a link to our Singapore Hackathon coming out in July. So uh, soon we're going to actually have a hackathon and we, we encourage you guys to join. And that's the link where you can join us. And then I've also got the link to our GitHub page. Thank you. And with that, that's the end of my presentation. I look forward to any questions. Uh, thank you so much, Justin. Uh, am I audible? C can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So I think I oh, see really? questions already here. Yes. How do we get yeah. invited uh, to the Slack channel? So, yeah. uh, and I'm actually going to, I'll get the link and I'll post it down there. It's actually on our GitHub page here. All right. I'm going to post that down there and how to get invited to, I'll post a link to our GitHub page. And then on the top of that, you can, you can see that. I don't know whether, oh, I'm yes. sorry. I should. Yeah, so the other question was, what about lock and file data? Uh, are there any future plans, and does it have any feature for monitoring? Yes, so I'm going to answer the question about monitoring. We do have APIs for monitoring. 
that uh, you can easily access and monitor that. So we've got, uh, we've actually got APIs and SDKs, uh, sorry, an API that you can actually use for monitoring. We've also got a GUI that you can use for monitoring that. Uh, we, we do have some plans for block and file uh, data in our, our posit repository. So I'm actually going, that's a question that I can take further offline. You can email me, I'm gonna put my email here, Justin Dawu. I think that's a good subject that we can actually uh, probably yeah, take so, so offline John, on. Ben, John Bent has actually shared the link for joining Slack, cortex.link slash join Slack. Okay, that yes. The link. So thank you, John, for that. So CoffeeZilla, this is how you can join the Slack channel. And uh, uh, you can see the other questions. Okay, there's another question from Tong Zhang. And he wants to know, does it support at rest compression and or encryption? That question, I do not, I apologize. I do not know um, the answer to that question uh -huh. uh, yet. I think, I think if you can, uh, not only you can email me the answer to that, but on our discussions page on GitHub, if you could post that or Slack channel, I'll be more than happy to take that uh, sure. offline and, and, and understand the needs of what, what type of compression right. or encryption that we, that, that we can better provide. So what we'll, what we'll do is that we will get this question to you as well uh, via email. And uh, Tong, maybe you can, you can see, this is Justin's email ID, justin.wu at seagate.com. Uh, if you could just drop him an email as well, maybe you could get direct answer from him or join the discussion board at Cortex GitHub. Uh, are there any more questions? If we have any questions, we do have some time for questions right now. Uh, but thank you, uh, Justin. I see some places where we can also work with Soda and Cortex. So uh, I'm looking forward to doing some you know, explorations and integrations with Cortex. So welcome to the open source family. Yeah, thank you. Again, very excited. And you know, the, one of our really key goals is to invite people to the community that will contribute, influence it, and grow it. So thank you so much for letting us chat and, and present Cortex here. Awesome. And we will, I think there is another question here. I got it. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. So those are features currently being added. We would love to come. Okay. So I think uh, John has given a sort of an answer to Tom. Uh, those are features currently being added. We would love community to help for them. The community version has a file interface, but Seagate has not been actively developing. Oh, that's an answer to uh, the question where the block and file data is supported, I guess. Correct. Yeah. So that, uh, I think, so far was good. Thank you so much again. And with that, we will now uh, be moving to the next session. And that would be uh, the autonomous storage and memory management by Irfan Ahmed. Thank you once again, Justin Wu, Senior Cortex Developer Advocate at Seagate. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.